Chapter 3. The Gathering Storm Despite the progress fostered by Zephyr's guidance, not all was harmonious in the expanding tapestry of human and alien relations. As Earth's technology advanced, so too did the ambitions and fears of its inhabitants. The delicate balance that Zephyr had worked so hard to maintain began to fray under the weight of escalating tensions and competing interests. In the halls of power, whispers of a new Cold War echoed ominously. Nations that had once seen the benefits of cooperation under Zephyr's influence now found themselves drawn into a dangerous game of one-upmanship. Space, once a frontier of shared exploration and wonder, became a battleground for dominance and surveillance. Zephyr watched with growing concern as the very technologies he had helped develop were repurposed for military use. Satellites, once tools for communication and observation, were now armed with weapons and cloaked in secrecy. AI, meant to serve humanity, was weaponized, its algorithms twisted to predict and counter enemy moves. The social networks that had once connected people in a global embrace of unity now served as echo chambers for propaganda and disinformation. Conspiracy theories flourished, and with them, a deepening mistrust between nations and peoples. The dream of a united Earth, guided by wisdom and compassion, seemed to be slipping away. Amidst this gathering storm, Zephyr knew that he could no longer remain in the shadows. The time had come for him to step forward, to use his position and influence to confront the mounting threats to peace. He convened a summit, inviting leaders from around the world and from his own people to address the growing crisis. At the summit, held in a remote location shielded from prying eyes and ears, Zephyr spoke with a clarity born of his centuries-old wisdom. He reminded the assembled leaders of the common threads that bound all life in the universe, urging them to consider the consequences of their actions on future generations. But his words met with resistance. Nationalistic pride and the seductive allure of power proved difficult barriers to overcome. Zephyr realized that the path to peace would not be easy, that it required more than just words, it demanded action, sacrifice, and a willingness to put aside old grievances for the sake of a greater good. Determined to make a difference, Zephyr embarked on a series of diplomatic missions, traveling to hotspots around the world to mediate conflicts and promote understanding. He used his ACI technology to facilitate open and honest communication, helping leaders see past their prejudices and find common ground. In Africa, he brokered a peace agreement between warring factions, convincing them to turn their attention to rebuilding their communities instead of destroying each other. In Asia, he worked to ease tensions over territorial disputes, emphasizing the importance of shared resources and environmental stewardship. Zephyr's efforts began to bear fruit. Slowly but surely, the tide of conflict began to recede. Nations that had once been on the brink of war found themselves collaborating on projects of mutual benefit. The specter of a new Cold War faded as trust and cooperation took root. But Zephyr knew that the challenges facing Earth were far from over. Climate change, resource depletion, and the widening gap between the haves and have-nots threatened to undo all the progress that had been made. He redoubled his efforts, working to build a sustainable future for all, one that respected the rights of every living being and the delicate balance of the planet's ecosystems. As the years passed, Zephyr's influence continued to grow. He became a symbol of hope, a beacon of light in a world that often seemed dark and divided. And though he faced setbacks and opposition, he never wavered in his commitment to the cause of peace. For Zephyr understood that true peace was not merely the absence of conflict, it was a state of being, a recognition of the interconnectedness of all life. And in nurturing that recognition, he knew that he was planting the seeds of a future where Earth and his own world could thrive side by side, united not by fear or force, but by a shared destiny in the vast expanse of the cosmos.